there are countless cloud DevOps things to learn. Which specific topics should you learn to be successful in 2023? I'm a senior solutions architect working at AWS. As part of working in world's largest and leading cloud provider, I interact with real customers. Whatever I'm going to share is based on my real world experience working with production projects. And these are the five trends I'm seeing. AWS Fargate is becoming more popular. I'm seeing that customers want the best of both worlds. They want the flexibility and open source nature of containers, but they also like the simplicity of serverless. With serverless, you do not need to manage any kind of server, virtual or physical. That means the customers do not need to patch or think about the underlying infrastructure scaling. AWS takes care of all that. Fargate is going to be more popular. As a stretch goal, you should learn Kubernetes and then learn EKS Fargate. Second, event-driven architecture. In event-driven architecture, the producer and consumer are decoupled from each other. Because of this, they are independent of each other and they can scale independently. This allows the application to scale massively without incurring huge cost. I'm seeing a lot of customers are leaning towards event-driven architecture. A lot of the major products that you use today, including Amazon, utilize event-driven architecture. More and more event-driven architecture discussions are happening in my daily meetings. So I anticipate that 2023 will be a big year for event-driven architecture. What are some of the event-driven architecture services? Lambda, SQS, SNS, Step Function, EventBridge. Study up on those theory as well as do some hands-on. Next thing to master is at least one DevOps tool. Recruiters and interviewers love when you have one DevOps tool mentioned because if you master one DevOps tool, you can carry over the concept to other DevOps tool. Jenkins is still the most popular, so you can go ahead and learn that. However, GitLab, GitHub Actions, Bitbucket CI/CD, they are all catching up. If your current project uses some Git DevOps tool, please learn that, that will be easier to master. When you are learning this DevOps tool, at least implement a couple of hands-on projects and save those projects in your GitHub repository and link that GitHub repository in your resume. You should implement an infrastructure as code template using Jenkins. So for example, you can use either CloudFormation or Terraform and run that using this Jenkins job. The benefit of this is, this is very impactful project. If your project needs to provision a Kubernetes cluster, you use the Terraform or CloudFormation to provision a Kubernetes cluster, that's it. If your project needs to provision a Lambda or EC2, all you need to change is the infrastructure as code. However, since you have implemented the infrastructure as code with DevOps, you can reuse the same concept from the same DevOps job to provision any cloud infrastructure. Second DevOps project should be on GitOps. GitOps is a relatively new concept in the Kubernetes world where Git serves as the single source of truth. Anytime the Kubernetes cluster deviates from what's defined in Git, the Kubernetes cluster reconciles and bring in the changes and deploy it in the cluster. I'm seeing GitOps is becoming super popular and I anticipate in 2023, GitOps will only grow in popularity. I have a separate video going over what is GitOps versus DevOps and a hands-on project of creating a container image and deploying it in a Kubernetes cluster using GitOps. Check it out, I'll give the link in the description. The next topic is cost optimization technique. Specifically, cost optimization techniques with EC2, serverless, and Kubernetes. Economy is getting worse. Customers are asking about more and more cost optimization. This will go even further in next year. So you should be prepared. Whether you go for interviews or you are working in real world projects, there will be more pressure on doing more cost optimization. So when it comes to cost optimization, there are a couple different layers. The first layer is the generic layer, such as using spot instances, using compute savings plan or reserved instances. Then you need to go into specific technology specific cost optimization technique. For example, how do you cost optimize Lambda functions? How do you cost optimize Kubernetes workload? So a couple of hint with Lambda functions, you can use Lambda insights, which will show you the utilization of memory and the time. And then you can adjust those factors to optimize your function. And this is just one of the factors. There are multiple other factors on serverless. So study those up. Similarly, for container, there is CloudWatch Container Insights. There are other third-party tools which can tell you whether your container resources are underutilized. So you can tune them and cost optimize them. I just mentioned a couple of these things. 
I'm going to give a couple of links in the description where you can go and study cost optimization techniques of serverless and Kubernetes. The next one is little harder, but that can go a long way. Learn one programming language at basic level. I recommend Python. It is because there are a lot of examples of Python with AWS resources and always try to learn things which can be used in multiple different areas. For example, I gave an example of running infrastructure of code using a Jenkins. It has a lot of impact in different AWS services. Similarly, Python can be used in infrastructure as code such as CDK, scripting, some automatic job. Python can be used as microservices. I actually learned Python when I was working in mainframe and that helped me a lot. Also coding is not mandatory for cloud job, but having one of these programming languages in your resume opens up a lot of doors. Also, you don't need to learn data structure and algorithm. And also you do not need to learn advanced concepts like Python classes, iterator, etc. As long as you know how to call AWS API using AWS SDKs, that should be enough. Now, if you are an experienced personnel, you should also learn system design. Experienced folks are expected to lead the team with system design concept. If you are applied for a job, it's almost always certain that if you are experienced, the interviewer will ask you system design questions. Also, if you are experienced and you are interviewing some candidate, you are expected to ask system design questions to the candidate. So it will serve you both ways. Couple of important things to keep in mind in addition to those Cloud DevOps topics. If you are a fresher or newcomer, try to get engaged in a hackathon next year. When you mention a hackathon with a URL in your resume, it creates a good impression. If you are in India, look up Smart India Hackathon. It does not matter whether you are in tier 1 college, tier 2 college or tier 3 college. Anyone can participate in this hackathon. There is also another good hackathon called Hack Oktoberfest. This is an open source hackathon that anyone can participate. You can also Google hackathon in your local area, your state or in your country. If you cannot find anything, you can also build a custom Alexa skill. And whatever you do, mention everything in your GitHub page. For example, I was in the same shoes as you. I was working in mainframe without any cloud experience. So I created an Alexa skill and you could see I have put this in my GitHub repository four years ago. And I explained everything and when the Amazon recruiter called me, I mentioned this and I was able to explain this and that created a good impression in the recruiter's mind. Also create LinkedIn posts and Medium posts. You don't need to be an expert. Don't think that you cannot post anything till you know everything. No one knows everything. So if you see an example on 2017, so almost five and a half years back, I posted a Twitter analyzer, how to do that with AWS and Google Cloud. 2018, I post analyzing news with AWS Comprehend using Alexa and IoT button. When you are doing hands-on, try to think of like what different use cases can you implement with this hands-on. And when you do that, explain this in a LinkedIn post. Another important component is communication. It doesn't matter how much you know if you are not able to explain it to the interviewer and your team member. My communication was terrible. I have studied in Bengali school my whole life. I joined Toastmasters when I started working for Cognizant in India. That really improved my communication. Currently Toastmaster gives you a license ID. If you stick with Toastmaster and get the certification, mention that license ID in your resume. Let's make 2023 the best year for your career. All right, I'll see you guys and girls in the next video. Bye.